My computer's making a really loud sound. <laughs> well, hello everyone. Let me make sure I'm recording. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you are new here, hi, my name is Adam. I do mashups, remixes, now commentary. It's clear that you all like it, so I'm gonna keep doing this from now on. I just I can't even begin to say how happy I am about the reception from the last video. Holy crap, did y'all blow that out of the water. I was not expecting that at all. But when it comes to my channel, I've never really had any high expectations when it comes to content of me. I just assume most people subscribe, you know, for the music and don't really care about me. But it just made me so incredibly happy to see a video that I, one, put a lot of time into, but also just a video that it has my face in it and it did so well and it just makes me so very happy and I'm so appreciative for all the support. And I did read some of your criticisms on the video and I hope in the future to kind of do better at some of that. I know a lot of people said that I didn't research it well enough and that is very true. There's a lot of times where I'm like, I believe or don't quote me on this and I want to try to eliminate those as much as possible. But today we are talking about Miss Dula Peep, Miss Dua La Pipa, traveling queen. <laughs> she said I'm an island and she was not lying. Dua La Pipa, I'm sorry. I want to talk today about her crazy kind of evolution as an artist because her, <laughs> her she's grown a lot, I will say. And I want to talk about one where she started and also how she developed as an artist over the past few years and kind of what caused that because Oh, the internet was not nice to her. And I know in my last video, I said that I will try to be unbiased as possible. I can't be unbiased with this one. I, if you are coming here as a Dua Lipa, like, disliker, disliker. If you don't like Dua Lipa and you are just going to get mad at this video, please go away now. There's no reason to be here. I love Dua and you know I have good things to say. So I will be biased towards Dua in this video because I love her and I think her evolution is crazy. So please don't get mad, just leave now. You know, there's no point. But before we start, my Twitter, which depending on when this video goes up, I may or may not still have that Twitter. <laughs> Check out my Instagram as well, uh, and follow my TikTok because I post a lot of videos on there that don't make it here. Um, and I post a lot of mashups that don't ever go on YouTube. So follow me on there, as well as if you are financially able, uh, join my Patreon. It's a fun time. Uh, I share exclusive mixes on there that don't make it any other platform and show behind the scenes as well as tease a lot of my upcoming projects. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So Dua, where did she start? Because I know for a lot of people, especially in the US, New Rules was a hit and boom, there was like Dua Lipa, you know, she was there. But that's actually not the case in the slightest. Dua Lipa actually got the YouTube start, uh, which I actually did not know. Uh, she started uh, posting covers on YouTube and wasn't actually really found as an artist until 2014. Um, she also worked as a model for a bit but she was signed to Warner in 2014. Her first single was titled New Love and it came out in 2015. It wasn't huge, you know, it was like, a, it was solid for a debut single, but it honestly didn't really make that much noise when it came out. And her second single, Be The One, was the one, <laughs> I hate myself, was the one that kind of put her on the map, uh, mainly in Europe, in the UK, because that's where she kind of dominated prior to making it in the US. She later released her self-titled debut album in 2017, which did really well and really helped propel her career. And the deluxe version is now one of the most streamed female albums on Spotify. Now you may be wondering, Adam, if she was so big, why was she not big in the US? And that's because the US is always late. It wasn't really until New Rules where she kind of broke the barrier into the US market. And now New Rules did really well like really well and it was huge on youtube it has over two billion views now billion think about that and for an artist who necessarily wasn't in the spotlight that was huge the music video attracted a lot of people because there was a lot of female empowerment and also it was definitely you know the breakup song of the summer now with her self-titled debut album she had other singles like idgaf blow your mind Mwah, and Hotter Than Hell, along with maybe some more. 
I'm honestly not sure on that. Um, and IDGAF was the follow-up single to New Rules. It didn't do that well in comparison to New Rules. It still did pretty well in the US charts and in the UK, obviously. But then she followed up that with a bunch of collabs. There was one kiss with Calvin Harris, which we will unfortunately have to talk about a lot in a second. Electricity, as well as Kiss and Makeup with Blackpink. And that was kind of it for Dua in 2018. She kind of came back in 2019 with you know, Swan Song, which was for Alita Battle Angel, you know, movie. But besides the release of Don't Start Now, the biggest thing that happened to her in 2019 was her win as Best New Artist at the Grammys. Now we all know, I don't know if we all know, I'm just assuming, but we all know <laughs> that Best New Artist has a little bit of a curse on it because there's a lot of times where people who win Best New Artist end up not being a very successful artists. After that, they end up dying down. For Dua, it was the complete opposite. Now, so far, it sounds like everything's going well, you know? Her career is going up, she's getting some hits. Well, not everyone had something nice to say. I think we need to talk about the dreaded One Kiss clip. You know, the... <laughs> that one, you know, where she, she's like... <laughs> Like that one. <laughs> yeah, that made the rounds a lot in 2018, 2019. And let's just say people people uh, weren't the nicest towards her. She faced a lot of online bullying when it came to her stage presence and her lack of dance ability. I personally believe that there was a lot of valid criticism in a lot of that because like, come on, if you look at some of those videos, she's giving us nothing. <laughs> But there was a lot of harassment that came along with it and just it felt like every week there was like a new clip of Dua not having great stage presence and everyone was just like, look at her, look how bad she is. And she ended up opening up about this later that it took a huge, huge toll on her mental health. It was really hard for her to even go on social media for a time because it just felt like every week there was another tweet going viral about how she wasn't a good performer. Like I said, Dua did an interview and told Attitude that they would take one small snippet and run with it and it would become a whole thing. Which, yes. And do I think she, at that time, could have improved her stage presence? Maybe. Maybe. And whether or not it was a funny meme, which I even times think is funny, it really hurt her mentally. And for a while, she thought she didn't even have what it took to be an artist. The whole concept of online bullying is really weird to me, because a lot of it starts not from a place of hate, just as kind of a, a funny like inside joke but once the whole internet gets a hold of it it no longer becomes that small inside joke because it's reached so many people that now everyone feels like they have a place to insert themselves into someone else's business <laughs> and again a few memes of the one kiss dance isn't harmful but you know the continuous reminder that you are not a good performer and that you don't have any stage presence can take a toll on someone. And so what did she do? She took that and came back stronger than ever, baby. In late 2019, Dua released the lead single to her upcoming era, the single titled Don't Start Now. And it's honestly funny looking back from my personal standpoint, because when Dua released it, it was kind of on my radar. I was like, oh yeah, Dua Lipa has a new song. Maybe I'll get to it at some point. But when I heard the song and the rest of the general public heard the song, we heard something, you know? In my personal opinion, I think Don't Start Now is one of the best pop songs released in the past few years. My personal opinion, don't attack me. And it's definitely not my favorite from her, but it was undeniably a perfect radio-friendly pop hit that also wasn't super generic. It felt refreshing and timeless at the same time, and it proved to have incredible longevity when it didn't even peak on the billboard until a few months into 2020, when it peaked at number two. And if it wasn't for the box, it would be at number one. And with her new song came her new stage presence. It was clear right away from, it was clear right away to, it was clear, uh, God. It was clear right away to her fans and just some of her casual listeners that she had stepped up her stage presence a lot. When she started doing the live performances, 
She had a whole nother life to herself, it felt like. She had a lot more persona on stage and overall just felt a lot more confident. And it's a mix of her just becoming a better dancer as well as just having better choreography. And I'm not saying she automatically became like Britney Spears or anything. She is nowhere near that. But it was obvious that work had been done and that she really tried to step up her performing. So, what was the next single you asked? Oh, why don't I tell you? Physical, physical. Physical. I, I don't... I, if you don't know me, let me tell you one of my biggest personality traits. It's Physical by Dua Lipa. When I first heard the song, it didn't pull me in that much, but I still really enjoyed it. It was the music video. And I've had friends tell me, Adam, the music video is not as special as you think it is. Well, it's special to me. The budget one on the music video was way up from where she had been in the past. Just the whole idea behind the colors and just how it was all laid out, it was just very visually stunning. And it really is the reason why I love the song so much still today. And it was obvious from that point that Okay, this next album, she's not coming to play. It was revealed that the title of the album would be called Future Nostalgia, which is honestly probably the perfect title for the album. And Dua herself said that the inspiration for the album was to create music that reminisced on the 70s and 80s music that her parents listened to, and then take a futuristic modern pop song twist on it. And in my personal opinion, I think she did a pretty good job at that. She almost kind of gave life back to album eras, if that makes sense. The whole like album era rollout thing has never gone away. But honestly, in recent years, from my perspective, it's felt like it's no longer a huge part of music, which I honestly miss. Today, because of streaming, the new norm now is to basically push out as much music as you can as quickly as possible with the shortest duration possible. Who, who do I need to fight for making songs like two minutes? Who decided that? But she really did come through with a whole concept for an album that would end up having incredible longevity, that would end up still being at the top today. And that's shown from the fact that one, Levitating, is still a top 10 hit today. And Future Nostalgia, one year after its release, is still in the top 10 on albums. A year after its release. And it actually outpeaked its debut week on the Billboard 200 a whole year after its release. And I will get more into that in just a sec. But after she released the album, she ended up promoting Break My Heart as the single for Quarantine. Should have stayed at home. Should have told that to yourself, Dua. And then sort of kind of promoted Hallucinate. I don't know what that, was that a single? Does anyone know? I don't know. She ended up releasing Club Future Nostalgia, which was basically a remixed version of Future Nostalgia. I didn't care for it. It's just not my thing. It's totally okay. I don't have to like it. It's for a different type of music listener and that's fine. She ended up doing a whole virtual concert experience titled Studio 2054, which I did watch and was very good. She also did some other collabs in 2020, uh, such as Fever and Prisoner. And in early 2021, she released the deluxe version, the Moonlight edition of Future Nostalgia, which contained new songs such as if It Ain't Me, That Kind of Woman, and the new single, Were Good. It was obvious throughout 2020 that she had stepped up her game as an artist, had stepped up her musical ability, her dancing, her stage presence, and just her overall oomph as an artist, if you will. And where she really proved that she's a force to be reckoned with was the 2021 Grammys. First off, she won a Grammy. Congrats to her. She won the Grammy for Pop Vocal Album for Future Nostalgia, which made my heart so, so incredibly happy. But honestly, her biggest accomplishment of the night was her performance. She performed both Levitating with the Baby and Don't Start Now. And y'all, the little mashup interlude transition thing in the middle made my heart scream. From someone who makes mashups, and stuff for like a living basically. Hearing transitions and with mashups, the way she used other songs from the album too in the trans- oh my oh I was exploding. But for someone who may have not seen her perform since 2018 and since those videos were circulating, she improved so so much. Her charisma on stage was a lot more there. She seemed happy performing, which a lot of times you didn't feel that from Dua. And if you look back at some of her 2017-2018 performances of a new role, she doesn't have a lot of life 
to her face. She almost feels kind of like dead faced, which, you know, works for some artists, but for her kind of pop persona, it just felt really underwhelming. And to see her on the Grammy stage, having the time of her life, performing, dancing, doing all, pulling out all the stops for that one performance was from a fan's perspective, heartwarming to see almost, just to see her go from a place of being ridiculed for having no stage presence to then performing her asshole on the Grammy stage. Her performance is the most viewed Grammys 2021 performance by like a long shot. When I mean a long shot, I mean like she doubled to tripled to quadrupled like every other person. Her grammar performance now is almost at 30 million views. 30 million on a live performance. Like that's crazy. And it was just so cool to see how she proved everyone wrong. Do I think she's the best performer out there or she's the best dancer or whatever? No, she's not. I think she still has a ways to go when it comes to her overall performing, but the evolution was just so great to see. And now today, Dua is thriving. She, I believe she's not planning on releasing another album for a minute, um, which is totally fine. Not every artist needs to release two albums in a calendar year. I'm looking at you, Ariana. But it's just overall really exciting to see where she's gonna go from here. Because Future Nostalgia was a hit, critically did so well. The critics loved it, the general public loved it, and I'm really curious to see what her next era will really bring. Like, where is she gonna go? Because I consider Future Nostalgia similar to that of Teenage Dream by Katy Perry. Not because of, like, how well each of them did, because Teenage Dream outsold Future Nostalgia by Miles. But they both are a pop moment in time that will never really be able to be done again. Because just like Teenage Dream, there will never be another future nostalgia. So I'm really curious to see where Dua goes after this because she can't remake the same album and she knows now how much kind of impact she has on the industry. So I'm curious to see what she does. I personally hope she doesn't continue down the route of we're good because that song specifically felt pretty underwhelming to me. It's a good song, I listen to it sometimes, but I just don't think that that sound is where I think Dua is best, like not in the slightest. I would love to hear her tap into other eras of music or even just kind of create a whole new sound in general. But yeah, that's it for the video. Um, I hope you all enjoy. Uh, the point of this video, I don't know, to talk about Dua Lipa, what other point would there be? Yeah, I just overall wanted to see how she's grown because it's crazy to see her evolution. And I really hope she knows how big of an impact she has now on the pop side of the music industry because Future Nostalgia, besides maybe a few other albums, was the biggest pop album of 2020. I don't even need to justify that, it's just true. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of Dua Lipa. Are you happy to see Dua evolve into the art she is today? Or do you think she has still a bit of work to do? Because both of those arguments are valid. Make sure to follow me on all my socials, all of that fun stuff. As well, stay tuned for more commentary videos. And let me know what commentary videos you want me to do. And yeah, thank you all for watching. And I will see you on the next video. Peace out. Bye.